Hey guys, welcome back. So as you can see, the pillows are definitely better, but they still have these artifacts. And this means these guys 100% needs unwrapping. So we will do that in another video. What I would suggest in future that not sending your assets like this. It would be better if we separate the pillows. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. It would be better if we separate these into the 11 meshes. So 11 pillows we have here. So we would have them separately and then give them a lower light map resolution of 256 or something. After we unwrap and separate these guys, they would look like way much better. Stay tuned, I will upload videos soon unwrapping all kinds of objects. This is our apartment now. I changed the bed, added a chair, a desk, and I apparently a flying book. And some, you know, just inspiration from here and there. The next thing we're going to do is adding cinematic cameras and animate our cameras in the sequencer. So check this out. If you right click, go to animation and add a level sequence, you would have your sequence like this or more sequences. If you want to learn more about the sequencer, go to the learn tab and download the sequencer project. It has so much you can learn from. The sequencer is how you make movies inside Unreal Engine. So for example, my master sequence here, I have four or five shots. And if I click on, uh, on this little camera icon, I can view my animations. These are the cameras I animated inside the sequencer and that's what we will do now. I'm trying to move my camera but it won't let it won't give me back control. So I need unlock the viewport when you click on this camera icon. Now we're free. To add a camera you can do that in at least two ways. You go to the cinematic and you can add a cinematic camera. So press G to toggle the game view and this is the camera. This is our view and you can pin the view here so when you click on a different object you always have your camera so i i will unpin it and click somewhere else you see this little uh, preview is gone let's say i like this view the second way we can add a uh, camera is clicking on this arrow go to create camera here and cinematic camera this is our cinematic camera we just made from that view to view your cameras, click on perspective and it will list all the cameras you have in the scene. So we can rename this. This is the camera. Let's make a new sequencer and call it shot 7 for example. If you double click it, let's find our camera. This camera, you can either click and drag from the word outliner to the sequencer or you can select the camera or you don't have to select it you can click on add and you can search for it from here but if it's selected it will appear here on the top making it much easier for you to add cinematic cameras or any other actors to your sequencer the sequencer looks like a, an editing program like premiere or resolve and it's as simple as just going to the first frame going to transform location rotation scale so we want to animate the location of this camera so we can for example what you want to uh, animate x you can click on x add a keyframe go few keyframes forward like few seconds let's see three seconds on 30 frames per second so that's three seconds and you can animate your camera like this and add another keyframe and now if you want to play our animation let's just shorten this guy we can do that by pressing space we can view our camera like this and let's play back in reverse awesome let's delete this and now usually how i animate i enable auto keyframe the second way to animate your camera is enabling the auto keyframe and of course we have to add the frames manually like this and then let's scrub forward if we move the camera it will add a keyframe for us automatically so you can see the path here and you can see here it starts slow because we have like i don't know vertices dots closer to each other right click and 
go to the key interpolation and change it from auto cubic auto to linear and now they will have the exact same space and the camera will move in the exact same speed all the time so let's go back to, if you press on one let me let me tell you this shortcut one two three four five so if we press four it will go to linear one it will go back to the cubic and two is cubic user and we can open the curve editor here and select some of the keyframes so this is the cubic auto or user and if you press 4 make it linear you can see that it is linear so that's the curve editor super handy let's go back to view our camera one of the ways you can also animate your camera is let's remove these keyframes and now we don't have an animation right so if you go back to inside the camera and move our frames like go back to 75 and then i'm gonna look like this look to the right and then move slightly you see it's adding keyframes for us and now if you animate it will repeat our animation so that's one nice way to animate your cameras to have a like fly through you see super fast just click and drag these guys so that's an example I already animated four cameras so I have shot one so this is my first camera second third and fourth when you open your master sequencer or your master level sequence or the level sequencer all of these can be mastered by the way uh, if you just click and drag so let me delete this click and drag and there we go let me pin this here again if we click on preview and i can move this up or down to have only two two rows And that's our animation to render this out go to render this movie to a video or image frame sequence this icon usually I like to render an image sequence I set it to 60 frames per second and then 14 40p or you can set your own resolution so that's 2k for me you can set the location from the output directory and you can give it a name so when you render these guys out they would look something like this so this is my uh, timeline here on 60 frames per second so if you set it here to 60 this is just for preview by the way the display rates so if you go back to our animation we have 1200 frames so this is an image sequence 60 frames per second to enable ray tracing to enable ray tracing go to the settings go to project settings and you need to search for two things go to the search bar on the top and search for I RHI and change it from default to direct X12 and then search for ray tracing and enable ray tracing it will ask you to restart the project so let's do that it would ask us to save or not save that's not in my case and let's wait for it to restart again I like to enable ray tracing before I export cinematics of my projects so now we have ray tracing enabled and you can see the little reflections we get see I'm running on my BC 1080 Ti I don't have a, an RTX card see these two paintings here here they are so now we can go to the sequencer and here is our sequencer again maybe you have a low budget computer like my GPU here 
you can enable ray tracing before you export your cinematics it does not have to run in real time so again we enable ray tracing from the project settings and make sure your computer and your drivers are compatible with ray tracing after you enable ray tracing just click on this icon and render out your movie in the next lesson we're going to discuss your class project